All right. We good. We good? We good. We good. I hope we're good. Hopefully you guys are doing well today. Um, let me know you can see me. Let me know... Know when you can see me. Yeah. Just gonna like, just vibe, man. Just chilling. So good. <sighs> can people see me? I don't know if people can see me. No data. Where did I go? What? What's going on? Are we good? Current. What? Where did the people go? Did, did the stream just die? Is it okay? I don't know. <laughs> I feel like I did something wrong, but I'm not sure. Is everything okay in this part? Yeah, I think everything's okay. No, no, it looks all right. I think we're good. I'll just give it a few, uh, yeah. Hopefully you all can see me. Welcome, welcome to the live stream, everyone. Uh, we've got a Shin Yida, Yen of Ashes, um, Blue Dinner Box. Yeah, what's up, Andreas, how you doing? Uh, welcome, good morning. Good morning to everyone. Welcome to this live stream. Can see your guitar though. Yeah, we've got a few uh, guitars over here. Just a few of them. Um, I wanted to have this big just so I could sort of talk about how this is going to work today and just be really nice and clear about it so that everyone understands what this live stream is about because it's going to be slightly different than the usual stuff we do. I have been wanting to do a, a ranking video of J. Chow's entire studio discography. I would like to review and rank every single one of his songs. Now, we've done reviews before, you see. We've done reviews, but we haven't really done rankings before. And the reason is because I haven't necessarily felt sort of qualified or in the mood to deal with disagreements. But um, we are here today... Um, because we are going to try and rank every single J. Chow song, starting with the first album, J. And if we switch over to here, we've got the album on the screen. Now, we're going to be listening through each of these 10 tracks today. There are a few caveats, okay? One is, I've actually got a little thing here with lots of... Um, Lots going on here. If we switch, maybe move it over a little bit. Um, I'm going to be giving a score in each of these different areas. Um, I've just realized you maybe can't see that. So, yeah, that can you see that now? Yeah, you can see that now. I'm in the way. But these rankings aren't necessarily that important in the sense that you're going to get a big video on these anyways. I'm going to do a video kind of like I've seen a lot of people sort of do... Um, I've seen people do stuff where uh, they like rank like SpongeBob episodes or they rank like uh, Family Guy episodes. And I thought, well, why not try and do this for Jerry Charles' studio discography? So the very, yeah, we're just going to listen through it. We've got vocals, main theme, rhythms, coloration, the structure of these tracks, ornamentation. Um, I, I'll, I'll make these bigger, actually, so you can kind of, yeah, so you can kind of see that. Uh, performance, production, and feels, which is a, a category of how does this make me feel? How does it make sense with the rest of the music? And then an overall score, which will be the, the average score of all of these different categories. Um, I am looking forward to having arguments with people today because I know that I'm going to think some stuff and some people aren't going to agree with it. And that's fine. If you disagree with it, these numbers will be out of 10. So I'm going to give it a score out of 10. And I'm going to be basically, I'm going to be comparing what I hear from Jay Chow to any other musician I review. Now, I'm going to level with you. 
and this is potentially going to be a controversial statement, I have heard better rappers than Jay Chow in these reviews I've done. I have heard better singers than Jay, than Jay Chow. I have heard more explorative compositions and better production than I have with Jay Chow stuff. And part of that is because I've heard Jay Chow's earlier stuff from earlier on in his career. And it's an unfair comparison to a lot of the musicians that I work with on a daily about music. Um, you know, it's an unfair comparison. Production nowadays is so much easier than it was back then because you can make anything sound perfect, uh, potentially to the detriment of the experience. But that's another sort of argument for another day. So we are going to go through this list of tracks. And I am going to also write some notes as I go along. And we can just talk. I'm not going to be going, oh, this is cool or this is special because I'm scripting this video and I'm scripting this video so that I can potentially, at, at the very least, so that I can potentially get an English transcript that I can then also like loosely get some, some stuff translated for it. I don't know how I'm going to get the subtitles sorted in outside of English because I, I obviously I need to... um. Like if I was to get a 30 minute video translated, it would cost me a couple of hundred dollars. So I don't know if getting a professional subtitle translation is an idea. Uh, but also like I know that $200 is a fair price. And the problem with like these kind of reviews is that you don't know if you're going to be able to get past the copyright block. But anyways, we're going to start with track one, which is Adorable Woman. Um, apologies if that's not the name of it. I got these translations from Google. Let's go. Starting with um, track number one. Yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to potentially... How do I want to do this? Because I, I want to... Can I actually just put that here? Because I want to sort of like not need to um have to like go between the windows. Can I put this here? Yeah. Sup. Sup, Shinida. How you doing? Um, we're ranking Jay Chow songs. Um... I'm going to put, put that here, just so I can pause it if need be, so I can talk to people or whatever. This won't be as long as usual, and we won't be looking at lyrics. Um, yeah, there we go. See, this here, this first track seems so much more explorative than some of the latest stuff that I heard from Jay. Like, it's this, there's different chord progressions between the verses and the hook. The, there is some unexpected sort of like variety with the, with the harmonies there. So percussion is engaging and there's lots of different ways of approaching the way we do the vocals. I, I love it so much. Sup, Solaris, how are you doing? And who else have we got today? Who else have we got? I got to get a deep L. Deep L here. Deep, no, no, don't. No, 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 no. Stop, 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 stop. Here we go. Okay, Deep L. I gotta make sure I say hello to people. I might not be as talkative today, though, just because I will be writing, but you guys will get to benefit this because I'll, this is what I'm using to write a video about this stuff. Supper Bellu, how are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> The guitar work is sensational. 
Listen to that mid part. Wow. Sup, JC Huang, how you doing? Welcome to the live stream. Like, like how difficult is, is it for Jay to try and do this stuff later on? This is instantly scoring very highly because of the variety we have across all these different facets. This is a very strong first, first take. Yeah, that head voice, that head voice, it's so, this is so phenomenal. This track is such a, this is one of the best opening tracks to an album I've ever heard. Like for real, I have missed this. I love this type of J. I, I love this and I miss it so much. It's like I've been sort of dehydrated and I've got a glass of water. I will allow that, that key change that we had there was absolutely splendid. Absolutely splendid there because he went into it with that unison, that, that, that really strong note and, and elevated it. That's the kind of key shift I like. I have no issues with that whatsoever. And it's short, you know, it's short. Like under four minutes is that sweet spot. Two to four minutes is gorgeous. I, I love that we used the most of the real estate within this track. Okay, so let's do the scoring for this one. Um, okay, vocals. Um, vocals are eight. Main theme is an eight. Rhythms, lots of variety. I go 7.5. Coloration, lots of interest in the harmony. I'd give that an 8. Structure, yeah, definitely an 8. Really strong. And there's lots of variety there. You had different sort of changes to the motifs, and you, it wasn't predictable. And, um, and I, I, I listened to this as well. It, like, they had an interlude. They had an interlude that had its own unique sort of chorus and vibe to it and sure it's an r&b sort of so kind of classic but at the same time it's it's not less refreshing nowadays when a lot of the musicians i listen to just have one one main theme ornamentation um i'll go 7.5 for that there was a lot of range oh no there was there was there was there was uh, there was a bit of stuff going on with that guitar there a bit of flurry a bit of flirtation going on with the solo section the performance i mean like we're removing the the production aspect of it because and what we need to also think about as well is that with Jay, the stuff is so good, right? With, with Jay, the stuff is so good. I'll make it... Can I really not make that big without that going big? Oh, that's annoying. Sup, Yen of Ashes, how you doing? This is the track that made Jay Yang want to promote Jay. Well, of course it is. It's an absolute banger, RG, right? It's an absolute banger. Yeah, why did you hide this? It's absolutely criminal that Jay didn't get exposure. It makes me so upset. Like, I wish Jay cared as, like, no, he does care about his previous, he does care about his latest stuff. I just got the impression that Jay was really hungry for it with this one. Um, 
the the performance itself. Um, yeah, there was a lot of variety to it. Production. What was the production like? The over quality or the mixing and mastering of it? Yeah, it's an eight. Feels how did it make me feel? It made me feel. Maybe feel like an eight as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go equal sum of B five to M five. E five to M five? Seventy one. So what is that? If we go out a little bit. Um one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. There must be there must be nine. So that's uh divided by nine. So that's a seven point nine four. So that's seven point nine for the first track on this. Jackie didn't like the song. Well Jackie doesn't have good taste. So we're gonna just ignore what Jackie has to say. I'm the one I'm the one doing the scoring right now. <laughs> I'm the one doing the scoring, okay? Um, fantastic start though. What's the second track here? Perfectionism. Okay. Sassy um, piano line. Nice panning of the various elements. In the intro. Nice transition into the verse. Low key, I think the mixing of the vocals is better in this one than some of the later albums. It sounds so much more natural here. It's, there's nothing pushing against it. There was dynamic range to it. Yeah, that's. It's got that 90s R&B kind of vibe to it. Great variation here um, with those piano lines and such. Like we're changing the motif and the, the chord progression here. And it's similar to the start, but it's just you got these mid-range um, nuances that are going on. These little flurries there that are charming. Uh, you know, th th there's these little bits of uh, brightness and spice within these two tracks so far that I kind of love to pieces. Um, I love it to pieces, man. There's sub layers of keys too, and lovely falsetto sections there. The choice of vocals, additional, don't make a lot of sense to me. And, uh, I don't get the context. Video. Oh, that's a that's a that's a fantastic little bass line they've got there. Um, great Moog synth in the midsection. Lots of love for that. The piano is cool by itself, but it's hard of the scene almost becomes predictable by the delivery of it until the late stage in the interval where it kind of trills and dances across the speakers. I 
I'm not sure why there's a pause here. It would have been cool to maybe had a lead line there just to separate it. I know we're going back to the original motif, but it feels like it's missing something nonetheless. Okay, I'm going back to this bridge here. Like, again. You may have noticed something quite important and that's that I'm not looking at the lyrics because I'm ranking this based on the perspective of myself but as someone who doesn't understand the language. I can still gauge the quality of the vocal performance. I can still gauge the quality of the production. I can still gauge the quality of the music and the product, you know, like everything else related to that. I've been thinking about what people have been telling me about the issues with translation that even when people are really proficient, it's still incredibly difficult sometimes to know how to sort of word things or take things. And I also think it's one of the weaker part of my reviews. So I figure for these rankings, I'll just figure out on the stuff I can sort of ascertain and back up by my experience as a reviewer and as a musician. Because like, how can you say, oh, that's a good story. What's a good story out of 10, right? Yeah, there was less change to me in this one than the previous one. I know that they were trying to maybe go with the filtered vocals being something new and exciting, but I don't understand the context of it without the video, so I don't know, man. It sounds like Jay is a little bit kind of stuck with some of these notes that he's singing here, like he's having to push himself, and I'm not necessarily sure that I'm happy with that. His vocals sound great here, but I think they're stronger in the previous track. There's a bit too much going on, it's very busy, and I think it's the detriment of the listening experience. Yeah, I don't know what the break beat is there, I don't know why there's a break beat. Um, yeah, so da 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 da. Uh, no, 150. So, perfectionism track number two. What will we give this? Vocals, seven. Um, I didn't like that Jay was pushing his head voice as much. It sounded more natural on the previous track there. There's lots of variety, but then it becomes a little bit too busy in the chorus sections anyway. So, I'm not sure if I really appreciate that. I don't... It's it's not bad, though. Although, I suppose if seven is good, I'd, I'd give it a, I'd give it a 6.5. Just because I think there was almost too much of it. The main theme is interesting and intriguing. It sits thematically well with the rest of it. Instrumentally, it's interesting. I'll give that a seven. Rhythms. There was lots of there was lots of fun stuff going on with the rhythms. I'd, I'd give that a solid 7.5 as well. Maybe even an eight because of the variety that we had there. Coloration. Coloration's a tricky one because like the melodies and harmonies were fantastic. But again, I think it was too busy. There were too many different notes there. And sometimes we had sections where it's like, why are we having this motif being repeated here? It doesn't make sense. It was almost like in the most important sections where we had the chorus lines, we had all of the things. And then we went away and took it back and we're like, actually, hey, you know, let's just leave this naked. It, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I'm going to give that a seven. Structure, um... Probably a seven as well. I don't understand why we had that part, but then if it's not great, then I suppose I should give that a 6.5. Ornamentation. Um, I have to give credit to Jay Chow. You know, the piano playing was phenomenal and there was a lot of... Um, maybe that's 7.5. Give that a 7.5. Don't know why I went to Z. I went to 7.5. Um, I had performance. Uh, performance was, was good. Yeah, overall performance was great. The instruments were played well. I mean, honestly, like, it's, it's, I'd say 7.5. 7.5. Production. Production. No, I said it was as good as the previous one. That both tracks were produced well. The recording we see mastering is, is sensational. Um, how do I feel? Oh, about a six. It didn't really make me feel that good after listening to it. Um, so I'm going to go down here. This track got a 7.1. So the first track got a 7.9. I'll make it big. Yeah, so this is track... Um, this is track 2. Track 2. So track 1. 7.9 out of 10. 
Oh, I would say that the production on this album is better than the previous ones, up until maybe six or seven. I wasn't. I was. I was especially unhappy about Fantasy, to be fair. But that was just some bits. I'd. I'd say that honestly, that it was more interesting because of an increase in amount of the dynamic range and everything like that. I like the fact track two equals seven point one out of ten. Yeah, not a fan of the second track. So yeah, that that when I I guess I am a track. I am a fan of the second track because like. You know, I, I, it's still good. People call it a cheap. Yeah, but like, you know, it's the first album. Like, unless you have a big budget behind it, you're not going to get like million dollar production. Additionally, it took a bit to convince people to back J Chow in the first place. We got Starry Mood, track number three. Okay, so we have a car. Thank you, Shin. Oh, it's kind of cute, but there's a weird mid resonance that I don't like. Like with the guitars. It's a bit rough. Thank you. I, I'm going to be wearing this hat for these live streams. So. I'm kind of wondering if I should just wear a different hat so that when people come in, they know what kind of live stream it is. So if I'm doing like SP ranking, I wear a more gentle hat so that if someone disagrees with my ranking for the songs, they don't get really mad at me about it. Thank you, Inno Vashes. Maybe we can do it in a fan request. Okay. Just potentially nunchucks could be 10 out of 10 i don't know again i'm gonna be ranking it based on the music i've re reviewed throughout my entire career what people need to bear in mind is that i've listened to a lot of music i i i, I have listened to a lot of music so please do not expect that her eyelashes is getting a 10 don't expect her eyelash to get a 10 okay I would honestly say that River by Zhang Yuxing is, is, it just edges it out a little bit. It edges it out a little bit. Um, but of course, that's why I'm doing these ranking videos so that I can show my, my methodology for it. And when I do the big video where I talk about why I feel these way about these tracks, I'll elaborate on them with the notes I'm writing. Um, I'll go back a little bit. Lead and the vocals suit it. The guitar work is fine, but why is it on the right, the left? Thank you. Thank you for your support. I appreciate it. Who is that? God. Thank you, Negative Position. I appreciate the support. The oohs are cute. It's, it, it definitely appealed. appeals to Ace. I like this hook melody, though. I think it's great how sweetly he goes into his head voice and it matches the gentleness of the rest of the arrangement. The vocals are stronger here than that range. I like the very vocal phrasing, but there's less ornamentation because the composition is arguably more conservative. Okay, Shinida, you take care, man. Have a good time at work, okay? Okay, all right. I mean, like, um, yeah. We're, we're potentially going to have some arguments because I don't hear that. I don't, I mean, I hear the nostalgia for an earlier time 
and there's a sweetness there that will score highly on me. Like, I think it feels great and it makes sense for the instruments and the way that Jay is singing. Um, I, I don't know if it sings of love, but then again, maybe the, maybe the, these jazzy chords here, which are kind of awesome, dude. The jazzy inclusions later on are stunning. I don't think it's childish at all. Um, I think Jay needs to be kinder to himself. The rim shots are excellent. And there's a lot to appreciate here. Especially the dynamic range. The bass is rolling in the deep. And this is a stronger track. Um, I'm disappointed with a lack of, of in the final. Oh, oh, there's the extra vocals. Vocals occasionally. Oh, man. The head voice is not kind to Jay Chow. Great that he explores the fretboard at the end. The end. Okay, okay, cool. So we're going to give this one. Um, uh, I would say that the vocals are probably a seven on this one. They are stronger than the previous one, but I'm just in love with what happened occasionally. It was looking like a seven five, but then he went to his head voice and it sounded like he was struggling there. And I just felt bad for him. You know, even if he's hitting that pitch, it's not good to strain your throat. It'll wreck your vocals, man. So I'm looking at this more from like a technical perspective as well as, a, oh, he sings the right notes kind of mood, you know? The main theme is kind of eh. eh. The main theme is eh. It's it's inoffensive, you know. It's not something that really propels me forward and drills me with adrenaline. It's 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 like it's 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 for what it is, I suppose, for the genre that it encompasses and encapsulates. I suppose it's 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 pleasant enough. I'll give it a seven. Rhythms, mm, no, there's not a lot of them. A eh? it's it's a seven. Coloration, uh, probably a six, to be honest. Um, I did like the in instruments that we had throughout, and I did enjoy the fact that we had... Oh, I'll give it a 6.5, because we had a little guitar solo at the end, although that would probably come down to the performance, wouldn't it? Um, structure? Yeah, I'll give that a seven. Yeah, no, I think there was a lot... There was a fair bit of variety throughout. Ornamentation, it was nice to have the solo section at the end. I'll give that a seven. The performance, all in all, was... It was... It was it was wholesome, but I don't think it was anything revolutionary or that necessarily pushed Jay forward. Um, the production value on it was warm and sincere. Um, I'll give that a 7.5. The feels of it, how did I feel about it? It's like, yeah, it's kind of sweet. It's kind of sweet sounding. I suppose when you look at it as like a one-step, two-step, walking hand-in-hand -hand kind of thing, it's like, hmm... But as someone who doesn't understand the lyrics or anything like that, it just sounds like someone having a great time with you. I'll give it a seven. Okay. So what did we get for this one? Thank you, Shin. I appreciate that. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. This has got 6.9. Track three. 6.9. 6.95. Yeah, I guess I really didn't like that one that much. I just wasn't a massive fan of it. You know, there were strengths there. Just the coloration just kind of felt a little bit dull, I suppose. It was almost like JHL was playing a little bit too safe with that one. 
Um, no shade though. Again, I just I'm comparing it to a lot of the music that I hear nowadays. If I would um if I was to say that uh you know if I was to say you know is this more colorful or interesting? Actually, no. I'll give that a no, but that's not enough. I'll give it six point five because there was that that jazzy sort of. It's a perfect seven. It's a perfect seven. I've just adjusted it because there were some interesting extensions that were a little bit outside the key signature later on. So it's a seven. I'm ended to seven. Yeah, so still bottom of the list by not by much though. We've got track uh, four now. Wife. I love the new trally tone with these guitar bits. The choice to go for 808s and the drums like that with the shouty vocals. I don't like the, the energy there. It's almost like we don't trust the original theme. The flow falsetto almost is pretty but the vocals are almost too wide see you later on dress take care my dude are almost too wide to um enjoy they poke your ears there is fantastic rhythms in the chorus section Great unison with the guitar and kicks. And that funky lift in the last half of the chorus is awesome. Yeah. I actually think this is probably my favorite track so far. We'll see in the scoring section, but like, I just, that, that the combination of the really kind of eloquent, kind of catchy rhythms are a little bit out of place, but the unison nonetheless with the guitar parts, the, the flexibility of that, um, as well as, as well as a variety of different vocal parts, even though I'm not thoroughly convinced with how busy it was at the start. And that, that sort of semitonal chromaticism going on in the last part of the harmony of the hook was just gorgeous. I, I really enjoyed this one. I just don't like how widely those uh, vocals are panned there. They're a little bit kind of poking at your ears. I know that he was trying to make space for them, but at the same time, it's a bit rough, you know? It's easily one of the, the most explorative, unique songs we've heard today from JHL. It's a song for musicians, I think. It doesn't really sound like it's catering to the people that and the trills on the guitar. My goodness. I'm not happy that we went straight into this riff. It doesn't really feel like we earned it. You know, you could have potentially... And like, it's like he's trying to find a compromise between the people that enjoyed the first three for how more, sort of relatively more compositionally conservative they were and also the musicians would be able to appreciate all the kind of complexity of the arrangement and theory of this track. It's kind of rough. You know, it's kind of rough. Cool, ch cool choice with the panning there, I understand, I suppose, from the perspective. Yeah. Is transcendent. I genuinely think, I genuinely think that we, um, this is my favorite on the album so far, actually. It's not just that, I agree, Jacob, but it's not just the vocal technique as well. It's the production that comes with that and the creativity within this post-production studio side of things. Like to have it come in middle, right, left, like that, and to go, whoa, wow, is it? 
especially when we didn't have like easy access to digital stuff back then a lot of it was still through analog equipment i mean that was there but it wasn't as advanced as today you know don't know why we're doing vocal dubs in this bit this seems to me to be kind of lazy like i know we're hearkening back there was no rap at the time period about any... Really, Sun Jimmy? I didn't realize that. Sup, VSGF? How you doing? Oh. Oh, really? The first album? That's cool. I didn't realize. I hear you. Yeah. That's why I'm being very gentle with him because he I, I know that for the time that he came out with this stuff, it was transcendent. 50, 50, 50 on the rapping overdubs at the end. For track number four, okay, that was good. Um, no mainstream rap. Yeah, I, I don't think he destroyed the song at all. I, I think it's just that I don't know if Jay Chow was as confident with his own style as he is in his later albums. Yeah. Wife. Okay, so let's talk about Wife from a scoring perspective. Um, vocals? Definitely 7.5. The production of the different vocals and how great they sounded is separate to me to the... The production and the vocal performance itself is great, but it's, it's stronger than two and three, in my opinion. Uh, main theme, it would have been an eight if I were more convinced about the vocals at the end. The main theme is an eight. The rhythms were an eight. The coloration is an 8.5. It was just because we had some really kind of unusual, interesting decisions made with these chord changes, especially in that, that chorus section as well as the intro theme being a little bit rebellious. You know, we weren't needing to switch to a definite major or minor. I love the choice there. It's really clever. Uh, so yeah, the structure of it? The structure was, oh no, it's kind of weaker because of the fact that we just went and kind of slapped that chorus back in there for the second half. Even if I like the chorus there itself, but I'm gonna give it a seven because we did have like that kind of thing. It'd be a six if we didn't have a dedicated solo section. Um, ornamentation ornamentation is probably um, I, I think an 8 yep there was lots of little bits to appreciate and enjoy the performance itself was an 8 I don't think there's like it's not the best of e e performance I've ever heard ever but at the same time it's certainly in a place where um, how do I say this there, there was an actual sense of humanity with the way the guitars were being played and everything like that. There wasn't set necessarily enough to put it to a 9 or a 10 for me because we, we could have added more to parts of like the chorus and stuff like that. I think we were too vocal oriented and dependent on that. The production is... Is that an 8 or an 8.5? Hmm. <laughs> hmm. It's tricky. Give a good night. Okay, give that night. Okay? It's going to be a night. The feels? The feels of it. Probably an, a, a night. So how much is this? Oh, so this is not my favorite for today. This is my second favorite. Four, seven point eight eight. Track four, 7.89. So it's my second favorite today so far. The first track is still the favorite. Um, yeah, so we've got track five. Ranking is first, fourth, set, set, what was it? First, fourth, second third so the ranking is first fourth second third so far okay let's go four so track number five now
are almost a little too active and don't gel well with the softness of the vocals. There's a weirdness that I don't like how that, did it, did it, did it, that synthy bit sounds. It's irritating the crap out of me. It's too sharp. It needed to be EQ'd so that it was a little bit less kind of resonant in those high frequencies. Um, it's very active. It's very busy, this song. Um, you can tell I'm being a little bit more blunt with this, primarily because, um, well, A, it's it's because I have to be, because there's 150-something songs, and I have to be like, nope, this is at this level, this is at that, right? Um, the vocals are fine, but they're too... Oh, I, I hate it, dude. I, d I hate that. I hate that sound so much. It makes me very upset. So you can tell. Hmm. Don't know, Zhang. I'd have to think about that. I'd have to think about that, mate. I'd have to think about that. I think that if we had more modern vocal production here and Jay's vocals were a bit sharper in the mix, it would tonally and texturally match well with those synth parts. But it's like we're trying to shove like a 1990s R&B song into like 2010 dubstep or something like that. Sup, Tom? How you doing? And Solaris, I feel you on that. I feel you on that, my dude. I feel you on that. I feel you on that, Jacob. I'm glad that I'm not alone. Like the, the breakbeat. Oh, I, I, I fucking hate it. I'm sorry. I'm getting really upset with it. I need to just take a moment. It's actually bothering me listening to that. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I, 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 I can appreciate that how creative it is, and I, I am impressed with this and the balls that he had to put out this track, and I think it's phenomenal because I don't think you could get away with it nowadays from a mainstream pop act. You, you really could not. It was revolutionary for its time, but just the, the sound of it is so kind of sharp that it irritates me. And these are on headphones that are like bass resonant. If you're listening to this through like a phone speaker, or if you're listening through this through like headphones that have like a mid to high resonance, that's not gonna be pleasant, you know? That's a production issue, I think. That's a that's a leveling issue, you know? Come down, check, sweet finesse. Nevertheless, I'm impressed with the best. Rap part. Check one, check one. Interlude is okay, but why why have half of a bar and just just not all of them? Why is there what does this have to do have to do to do with basketball? You know, like, as someone who's seen the, the literal translation as basketball game, what does this have to do with basketball? How does this make me feel like it's basketball? Because it's one thing to know the lyrics and be told to read the lyrics because it's important to do so. But also my issue is, is that I don't feel like this is basketball. I don't know what this is. It's very, very weird. Um, you got roasted in Toronto Zoo, Tom. Are you, do you wear sunscreen, my dude? Is it summer over there for you guys? Yeah, is it summer? Please, please don't, please, please don't get sunburned. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I know it's late for a lot of you, but I don't have a, t I don't really have another time of day to do this kind of stuff. This is, 
I'm doing this before I go do my teaching work. I can't do live streams during a week at 5 I, 5 p.m., you know? Cuz I, I have to I have to pay bills. <laughs> but I enjoy this. It's good. Just a heads up, we we may or may not be doing live streams every day this week. So tomorrow through to Friday for each of the five albums. Um just letting you know. Okay, but just that's a maybe because it depends on whether or not something comes up for me. At this point in time, though, I'd like to do each of these albums this week just so that I can work on this video and get it put out. Farmer Tan, nice. Thank you, Solaris and Jacob. I appreciate that clarification. Um, donations um there should be a little thing to do donations um there should be donations here i've got monetization on uh maybe you guys can't see it i don't know but um if we go here um yeah if we, if we go out of this enable monetization did i not enable monetization what and it is on. I did enable monetization. Oh, well, screw it. <laughs> um, uh, you can always, you can, I don't know. I don't know if super chats enabled. Maybe leave a super thanks after the live stream. If you want. So chill. Either way. Thank you. Uh, okay. So so then that's that. I can't see if they're enabled, but just in case, okay? But yeah. By the way, you don't have to donate, but any donations are greatly appreciated. Thank you very much. Yeah, I mean, I hear the basketball sounds. This is not going to necessarily be a positive review, guys. Uh, positive ranking. I just feel very kind of generic about it. Good morning, Jimmy. How are you doing? You well, welcome to the live stream. Uh, we're doing we're ranking J Chow songs today. Um, you don't expect this one to be super positive, all right? Um, not because I have anything out for J Chow, but because, uh, yeah. Vocals, seven. Main theme, seven. Rhythms? Rhythms. There is a lot of really cool, interesting rhythms in here, but my, my, my issue is that, with the, that they're not implemented correctly. You've got lots of cool little drum fills that go on there. The flow changes in the chorus of verses consistently. But at the same time, it was kind of meaningless to me because I couldn't understand how it sort of related to anything else. It almost seemed like we're being busy for the sake of being busy. You know what I mean? There was a lot. Like, it was almost like Jay was like, yeah, I don't know if this is one of my strongest songs. So I'm going to make sure there's so much happening that people are engaged regardless. Rhyth rhythms are seven. Coloration, oh, I'd say to a detriment, actually. There's too much coloration in there. It, it's it, like, actually, you no, know, coloration, that's, that's ornamentation I'm confusing that with. It was fine. I suppose if we talk about the harmonies and melodies there, um... You know, it's a seven. Structure of it? I don't know. 
like the interlude was is engaging i guess it's not like it particularly resonated with me um the, 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 you know it, it had like verses and choruses and it had like a weird interlude kind of thing i'm gonna give that a 6.5 ornamentation there, there was a lot of ornamentation a lot of little bits from various instruments but i don't know it kind of irritated the crap out of me i i <laughs> um yes i i think i have heard william Clark castle shin and it's a great it's a, it's a great it's, it's a great song as i remember it we're going to be reviewing that tomorrow maybe i don't know it depends on whether i how I feel after doing this one. Ornamentation. Ornamentation. Probably a 6.5. I think the, the oversaturation of it was to a detriment. The performance was passable. The production was a 7. And the feels were a 6. I didn't really feel great after that. In fact, it kind of pissed me off with this sharp, stabby thing. So I'm giving it a 5. That means it is 6.67. Track 5, 6.67. This is my least favorite one today so far. Okay. That was basketball match. That one's gonna be fun to to talk about in the in the big video. <laughs> Let's go. Okay, so we're starting with a with a ballad. Very cheesy, but Jay's vocals suit this format better than some of the others. I think the issue for me was that in this album, Jay Chow was trying to combine like the sing rapping because he understood maybe that he couldn't do like the rap rapping like he did in the in the later albums. So he was trying to incorporate that melody into it, and it didn't work well because with rap you need to have a a percussiveness to it that that'll sort of meld and unify well with the the vocals, and you don't get that with this, and it's very disappointing. Well, not with this song specifically. This song is a phenomenal show of Jay's talent. Jay's strongest tracks specifically are with his ballads because at this point in time, his clean vocals are his strongest asset. And again, he's a great rapper. I hear some of his stuff later on. It's fantastic. But in this one, I'm not really sold on it. Especially when you compare it to other hip-hop and rap artists from around this period. Exploration. <laughs> Yeah, there we go. That's it. That's what I fucking... That's what I wanted. That's what I was looking forward to. Because I actually was wondering what song this was of Jay's. And now I'm reminded. This song has been stuck in my head for a while. Which is a great thing. That's very positive. This is a really great vocal melody from Jay. And he sits alone in the mix. There is far less energy. There's far less saturation of unnecessary additional elements in the mix. It's flawless. His strongest vocal performance here. This is potentially an 8.5 or a 9.
Now, this is the reason why it works, just going back into the similar vocal section that you had previously without needing a different verse there, is because you have the rest of the elements introducing themselves and then Jay just lets them speak. So there's room in the composition for you to understand the gravity of the increase and the overall sort of saturation of it. And then Jay comes back to something more familiar and it manages to sync really well with the bridge and cook. This is masterful composition. It's probably an 8.5 or a 9 with vocals at this point. Like, comparison to what I've heard from Jay, 8.5 to a 9. Again, considering where Jay was at at this point in time, it's, 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 it's very impressive. Yeah, no, I'm not going to say that his vocal technique's phenomenal, but the fact that he's managing to pull it off anyways is impressive. I'm aware that he's... He's got... Going on here because he's using his throat. Cheers for that, Tom. I appreciate that donation. as much, much appreciated. I will keep it up. Good, good. Tom, Tom, thank you again. Your kindness is greatly appreciated. Thank you. Um, it means a lot. Thank you for so much. <laughs> All right. Thank you again, again. Tom, you are incredibly generous. Thank you so much. That is, this is, that, that's so kind of you. I really appreciate it. Wow. And I am flattered. Thank you so much. And that ending, dude, this is probably the strongest track on the album so far, um, without a word of a lie. So, so let's, um, let's, let's talk about the score for this. Man, I'm, man, thank you. I never thought when I started this that people would like, like donate to show support. Like it, it, it just blows my mind, man. Um, I don't take it for granted. Thank you. It's an incredible song, absolutely. Um, so let's talk about this track, though. Vocals. Nine. The vocals are a nine. Uh, you know, when I'm comparing it to the musicians I've reviewed, I also have to think about, even if they can sing a lot better, is it necessarily more appropriate for the experience? Um, I go for nine for that. 8.5 for the main thing. But if I just take a moment to sort of, like, stabilize... You know, because I want to treat every song, you know, with a similar kind of groove to it. Um, 8.5 for the theme. Yep, I don't really think you can fold it. Lots of variety with the rhythms there. Um, it was more, it was weird, like, I think if there had been like some, like more sort of intricate drum fills or whatever like that. I think the conservative nature of the rhythms is what actually elevated it. Um, it's okay. It's okay, Shin. It's okay, Shin. It's all good, man. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. Thank you. Um, coloration, 8.5. 8.5 for sure. I know that Jay has stuff where he's a little bit more sort of like... No, actually, no, it's 9. 
Is it 9? Is it 8.5? Because I keep forgetting that coloration is the harmony and melodies. I think there's a solid fundamental harmonic and melodic concepts here which are incredibly well portrayed. He also messes with parallel majors and minors and has really interesting ideas about the shifts of them. There's lovely, like, um, there's lovely decisions made throughout this track. It's, I don't think it's a 10 because it's not the best chord progression or harmony I've ever heard in my life. But I'm, I'm going to give it 8.5, which is still incredibly high. Okay. I just think there could have potentially been like an additional lead element there sometimes outside of the piano lines, or outside of the vocal lines. If Jay had just stepped off the gas for a minute, maybe put like another like like a guitar solo or something in that gap after the key change or the, the instrument increase, you know. The structure is an eight. The ornamentation, yeah, that that that's that's gonna be an eight. The performance itself was very strong. Very strong. It's definitely an eight there. Production it was, it was an eight. And the feels of it were an 8.5 because I got really excited. Really excited by it, you know. Yeah, it does. It's an incredible term. So track track six. Six equals is 8.22. So it's got eight out of ten. So this is the top for today. Track six is the top one. This was um, Black Humor. So that is that is the top one for today. We got Istanbul next. Istanbul. Sup, Rai? How you doing? Welcome to the live stream. How you doing? Thank you, Shin. So good, man. So good. Lovely move. Synth here with those strings. The bright, gentle guitar work. And the vocals suit this vibe as well. Lovely hi hat rhythm here. That's ghost noted so. It's, um, oh, oh, extra L tree in the middle. Ooh, great, great choice there with the falsetto there. I wasn't, I wasn't expecting that. Jay is my favorite artist ever. So glad you enjoy him too. I do. I'm not going to pretend I've enjoyed all the songs that we've listened to today the same way, but most of it has been very good. Sup, Skacharu? How you doing? Welcome to the live stream. Change harmonically. And the chorus is... It's fine. The call and response between main and backing vocals is great. The... That, um... That synth lead that we've got there is, is spectacular. It's such a cute little lead, and it sits really nicely in the mix, and I think it's one of the nicest lead tones we've had outside of the vocals so far in this album. Yeah, well, um, usually when we do these reviews, it is a little bit later in the day, but um, I, I always make sure that we uh, keep these streams online so that people can check them out whenever they want. <laughs> Um, that's cool, man. That's dope. We'll see, man. We'll see. Hopefully, you enjoy it however way it goes out. Sup, Cindy Lynn. How you doing? Okay, great continuation here. He's not totally comfortable in his higher range, but it's still working. But his head voice is not helping him 
It's too high. I wish there'd been an additional melody or something like that over top of this part of the chorus. I feel like it's kind of naked without it and that would have elevated it. Istanbul. What do we think about Istanbul? Um, we're just running through this album, dude. These are a lot quicker without the lyrics. <laughs> um, yeah, I liked the use of the the bell tree. The bell tree was one of my favorite parts about this. When people use bell trees, often it's the end and they go, Tling! but he was just using it in the middle of like these sections. And it's such a ballsy move, such a ballsy move, man. But Istanbul. What do we got here? 150. Vocals. Um, 7.5. I, 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 no, 7. The reason I'm saying 7 is because if I heard, like, the average musician I review here, if they sung in that head voice like that, I'd be telling them off. Jay really pushed himself too hard with that mm, kind of throat part going on here. It doesn't matter how great your melodies and harmonies are. If you're ruining your vocals, it's, it's counterproductive to the experience. And, um, you know, it's just a shame. I'm so glad that Jay's vocal technique Im improved over time. Um, the main theme was, was interesting, intriguing. It was nice and pleasant. Give that a 7.5. Rhythms? Yeah, I'm going to give that a 7.5 because I like the little drum fills, but I still feel as if there could have been additional work done to maybe change up the flow and structure of the groove there. I'm giving it a 7.5 a little bit higher than average just because, um, you know, it's not like the flow shifted or changed in a way that was unwarranted, but I, I still think you could have maybe even like wait, do some time signature changes or something like that. Have fun. Have fun with music, right? Coloration. Um, coloration is probably going to be... Uh, well, that, that, that's the harmonies and melodies and stuff like that. The melodies are pleasant enough. They're inoffensive, you know. There are some the cool changes with the way that the production is done. Like, pro, pro, we'll go to production in the middle. But but harmonies are probably going to be a seven. Structure? Structure of it, you know, seven. No, seven, because it, we didn't really do much at the end to kind of elevate that part um, with, with the hook and the chorus and stuff like that. You know, it's great to have a double chorus, but you need to sort of boost it a little bit. Uh, ornamentation, um, 7. Uh, performance, it's competent, 7.5, 7. And then production, the production value was fantastic. I really enjoyed the sound of those like moogs and everything like that. The Although I wish that like maybe the drums had been a little bit, little bit louder, like, or like the fills had been a little bit more defined, I'm not sure. Um, Defone is fifth album. Oh, yeah, that's dope. Well, congratulations to Jay on that, son, Jimmy. That's fantastic. Um, I, it's a shame. I don't know if he can hit that anymore, right? How do I feel about this? I feel kind of ambivalent. Like, it was a good song. I've got no real kind of this, this, this taste for it. Um, but yeah, track, track 7 is 7.22. 7.22. Um, so we've got eight and yeah, this one low key. Oh, bod Z1. I have been very excited for this next track for a quite a while. Okay, let's go. Great sound design. And the intro. Use of the hip hop drums and the turn tableism. The vocals sound so chill and confident. He's in 
This is easily one of the most creative tracks on the album by far. Just the oscillation of those keys, man. There's so much charm in this. There's so much to appreciate and enjoy. You never know what you're gonna get next. Key solo is invigorating. Yeah, they didn't. I can imagine this would have been very, very different, Brian. Yeah. This is, it's so sad to me that this is one of the least listened to tracks because this is one of his best. It's one of his best. There's so much variety and um, interesting sort of content in it. His rapping and his plain vocals are tight. You think it was more popular for little kids, RG, right? I see. <laughs> oh, clapping. He's found his vocal range. Yeah, well, who cares what Jackie thinks, am I right? Jackie didn't know, doesn't know shit. <laughs> if he thought this shouldn't have been included, man, it's so sad, right? Damn, that's a high note. Yeah, I know he needed his money back. But Jack... Jack <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, I like the fact that Jay Chow did this. It's such a ballsy move on an intro album, but it kind of gave, I think, I think these songs like these are important because at least you know how far he can go if he's left to his own devices. Yeah, how, the whistle note, like, wow, right? Wow. Okay, score time. Ba, 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 ba. Score time for Ancient Indian Turtle Dove. Vocals, 8.888. Eight. Let's not get too excited. Let's not get too excited. It's an eight. Main theme. 
eight. Rhythms, 8.5. Because these were some of the most incredible little juxtapositions rhythmically between the various elements. To get those breakbeats to sound so, uh, if, uh, you know, so uh, to amalgamate them so well with everything else that was going on, rhythmically this track was really complex and it worked out incredibly well. It's one of the most impressive um, showings of that in a lot of music that I've reviewed. Coloration, harmonically definitely eight. Absolute, absolute banger structurally. Um, uh, in terms of the harmony and, and, and all the different decisions there. It's not your traditional ballad or anything like that, but I think because of how spiced it is, for that to work nonetheless, it's very, very impressive. Um, the structure of it is an eight. I don't know how he managed to make that entertaining for five minutes, but to be fair, I suppose for it to be so weird, yet so catchy and so like memorable is testament to his skill as a composer and as a performing artist. Ornamentation? Ornamentation is probably like an 8.5. There is so much crazy kind of batshit insane stuff going on this track, and it all works as far as I'm concerned. I don't have a single complaint about it. I love it to pieces. The The performance here is an eight. You know, I think that that's it's a damn fine performance. It's one of Jay's most comfortable, confident ones within the album. The production is an eight, and it feels great. So what have we got here? Is this the top one? Oh, no. It's, it's the second highest. Eight. 8.11 it's the second highest for today which is a shame in a way because i think i did prefer it more than the first but the numbers don't lie man it's mathematics track nine though tornado tornado it is a shame that that tra eighth track does not get more love though it's an absolute banger of a tune dude just got to be a little bit more open-minded Jackie. Okay. All right. So we got to Triplet, clean, blow, and the chorus. It's quaint. Nice, extra, layering in the chorus on the upper keys. Okay, weird resonance on these back ones, but are they meant to sound warm, I suppose? He's trying to sing, and for the most part, it comes okay with this one. Such great flow. I dig it, man. I dig it. Got that flow. Oh, now that's the point. This is going to get him points because of the fact that you had the orchestral drums. You've had a sudden sort of motif change here, a shift in the chord progression going up that semitone to the flat second. Absolute. Yo, Chad move right there. I look forward to the eighth album, if that's the case, Solaris and Jacob. <laughs> Is it super hard to sing? Well, that's good to know. I guess I won't be singing it then. <laughs>
It works because the strings continue here. If they just stopped, it would have been so flat, you know? I'm glad you like it, Jacob, man. Genuinely, that's that's dope, man. I dig that. I, I vibe with that. It's a solid hook. I agree, son. Jimmy, I, I agree. If, if a song is simpler and is more easy to digest, it will probably be more likely to become popular because people won't have to think about it as much. They'll just feel it. And people share stuff that they feel things about more readily than what they think about. People are more likely, less likely to share stuff that they think about it because they're going to think, well, okay, what are other people going to think? Whereas you just like it because you feel it. It's spontaneous. Uh, great fade out. Nice uh, cut to the dynamics in that later section. But what have we got? Oh, whoa, 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 Spotify, you chill the heck out. We were not done here. No, 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 you come back. We've got to look through Tornado. You like the last one? Well, well lucky for you, we're going to be doing the last one very soon. Um, because I've got to go to work. <laughs> Tornado. Vocals, 7.5. They were great, but didn't really elicit a strong response from me. He's clearly... No, no, actually, no, there was some... Maybe that's 7.75. I, 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 I liked the little vocal runs there, but it wasn't enough to bring it to an 8. Uh, main theme, it's it's a 7. You know, like, it's it's musically sound. I can appreciate... 7.5. I can appreciate that, that, that why it's catchy and that it sounds epic, and with the, especially with the orchestral backing at the end part... There's a lot of work and a lot of effort. The rhythms there are a seven. We didn't explore too much as far as I could concern, but like it was, it was definitely palatable. It wasn't bad. It was just kind of eh. Coloration. Oh no, hang on. No, there were the, the triplet flow and the and the and the choruses were fun as well. So that's seven point five. Coloration. The harmonies as well were charming. Seven point five. Um, structure. Structure was um structure. Structure, um, I think that it was a seven. There wasn't anything particularly revolutionary about it. You had an intro, sort of verse, bridge, chorus, and then you had like a little quiet bit. Oh no, there was a different bridge though. There was a different bridge. That was 7.5. 7.5. Um, no, that was ornamentation. So structure is 7.5. Ornamentation is a, is a seven because we didn't really do too much with the solo sections or anything like that. We, we had... Uh, so these main things we didn't really sort of layer on too much. Performance wise, I think that the performance was a 7.5. He does sound a little more confident in the vocal range and the rest of the instruments have great chemistry. Production wise, I'm going to give it a 7.5. It's great, but I didn't really feel anything because of it. It was like a little bit of a build with those strings, but then it kind of fell flat for the last chorus in my opinion. And feels 7. So what is this one? Oh, it's 7.42. Track 9, 7.42. So it's good. You know, it's 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 definitely not at the bottom. It's probably like mid-range for me, that one. Um, but it's not bad. It's not the best. But it's still, it's definitely passable, you know? Track 10, Clock in Opposite Direction. Okay, so final track. And I agree, Bri. I, I think that there's definitely promise as you get along, you know? Final track. We have a lovely flow with the piano that sounds more intimate. I don't really like the use of the Moog with the drums. I don't get why that is paired with the drums and the piano. There's a weirdness 
with this mix. It's potentially the weakest. I'm gonna be honest, this is probably the weakest produced track in the album. I'm listening to this and I can see that there's some emptiness in there. It doesn't sound like they've glued things properly or there's like a resonance in one of the bass, bass instruments. Something's not quite right. It kind of sounds a bit empty to me. Maybe that's a deliberate thing, I'm not sure. Probably one of the cleanest uh, lifts into a chorus that I've heard throughout this album. It's the kicks. I don't like those kick tones. I don't necessarily think that the kick suits this mix. That's fair, Jacob. I'm glad you like it, Solaris. That that's all good. No, no, no shade, man. It's all good. Great job with the guitar line. This is exactly what I need between breaks and parts of a song. That there, you know the, you know when someone goes, you know that 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 there, you can hear how loud that is. That was louder than his rapping there, and that was a weird decision. I don't know if that was like a stylistic thing or not. But I didn't like the fact that the breathing was louder than the rapping. And I know that I'm not one to talk because my audio is not always fantastic, and very rarely is it great. But uh, we're reviewing a one of the biggest musicians of all time. <laughs> The piano is very far away in the mix. It doesn't sound like it's balanced well with the vocals. I don't know why that is. I, maybe it's the headphones I'm wearing. I don't know. I always second guess myself because this is probably produced in like a million dollar studio. You know? Like you're not going to go to a cheap studio for a, for a debut like this. You know? You're not going to screw with that. Very cool. Very cool. I mean, the main thing is if Jay's okay with it, that's what matters, right? Nice unison between the synths here. Okay. The Moog synth and vocal harmony. Sup, JC0116, how are you doing? And our stunning and the outro. Okay, last song, guys. Last song for today. I feel like there's something missing. It's like something you feel like the food needs a little strong taste in it. Fair, cool, man. I honestly don't know why it is. I don't know what it is. Um, I'd have to think about this in future. By doing these reviews, I'll also be able to gauge which is my favorite album. So that'll be interesting. Clock in Opposite Direction. Um, Clock in Opposite Direction. Vocals are, are passable. You know, they're, they're great, but they're not like the best I've heard from Jay Chow throughout this album. 
The main theme is okay. Rhythms, I, I, I like the 16th note grooves in the chorus. The drums are fine. And I, I like, um, you know, I, I think there's, there's promise in that. I like the exploration there. Coloration, the melodies and harmonies. I think there was, yeah, I, I'm going to give this a 7 5 prim primarily because I enjoyed like the bridge section, how there's a bit of darkness in there. I'm kind of even tempted to give that an 8 just because I think that the harmonically that's it really sort of um, strong actually. So apparently this gets an 8. The structure of it is a 7. I feel like there could have been more done in the last outro chorus, although it gets 7.5 because they put a little guitar solo there on a second. Ornamentation gets a 7.5 as well. They didn't over egg the pudding, but it also wasn't super like, like phenomenal. Um, the performance itself was a 7. A seven? Yeah, performance itself was a 7. Things felt like they played the way they needed to without overshadowing it, but there's nothing revolutionary. Um, production... Six. I'm not happy with how that sounded. To me, the mix sounded kind of off. I know some people will say, well, that's how he wanted it. Um, it didn't sound as strong as the rest of the tracks on the album. It sounded like there was something missing. Uh, so it feels... It's like a 6.5. I, 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 it's a nice way to end the album. But like it's not... It's kind of sort of like a little bit kind of disappointing at the same time. Because I feel like there were much stronger tracks on this record. And so... It's 7.111. So I'm going to go 6.75 to 138. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you guys who came first. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to put that down here. So the rankings for today, for today's live stream, 10th is um 6.66 uh basket basketball match ninth anything below six nope the next one was seven starry mood starry mood eight 7.11 Perfectionism Seventh Clock in opposite direction Sixth Istanbul Fifth, Tornado, Fourth, am I tripping? Fourth, is what? Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Cheers for your donation. Th thank you very much. I really appreciate the help. It, it means a lot. Um, it helps me to do these live streams. Um... Third, Adorable Woman. Second, Ancient Indian Turtle Dove. And the top track for me today, the top track and number one is, what is it? It's track number six. Black Humor is the top track for me today. Number one. 8.222222. That is the rankings for today's SP Livestreams ranking of JHL's first album, J. Just gonna make sure Obdus is still working. 
Thank you very much to everyone who came along to the Zispy live streams today to watch me write some stuff down and talk about J Chow tracks. Hopefully you enjoyed this review, this live stream. If you did enjoy this live stream, please do like and subscribe and remember to support your local musicians and artists at this point in time as they need the help more than ever with all the crazy stuff going on in the world. And please also go and show J Chow some love via his various social medias and his YouTube page, and his Spotify page, and everything. We will be doing these for all 15 of his studio albums. All 15 of them. Thank you, Tom. And I'm going to turn this off now, because I don't know if you guys can hear me properly. Um, I feel you, Solaris. It, it, these translations are always fun. And Sun Jimmy... That's great, man. D6 is awesome. Um, but thank you again. Hopefully you guys have a fantastic day. I will probably be back tomorrow to do more of this. And I will catch you in the next live stream. And Tom, yeah, man. Uh, maybe soon. We will see. There are top five Spotify's to go. We have plenty of time to explore lots of different musicians. I'm going to continue to try and interact with you because I value you guys being here to watch me figure this stuff out. Catch you in the next live stream. Spider hands out. Three.